Hello friends, today we are going to determine the resonance and anti-resonance frequency of a series and parallel LCR circuit. So in this experiment we are going to find out its bandwidth and quality factor as well. This is a very simple experiment. So let's start this. In this experiment we have two things to cover. First is series LCR circuit and parallel LCR circuit. Usually in our laboratories we find boxes like this to perform such experiments. If you need to perform this on a breadboard then at the end of this video their breadboard circuit are also given. So basically this is the box in which resistors, inductors and capacitors are given and we just need to connect them through wires. This is the circuit diagram for series LCR circuit. On the top left we can see that we have a frequency generator. Sometimes this is not inbuilt in this box. In that case we can use some external frequency generators. But the rest of the process will remain the same. First of all let's connect one side of frequency generator to the resistor. We can see the wire we connected in the box has been highlighted in the circuit on the right hand side. Now connect the other end of the resistor with the one end of the capacitor. Similarly we can connect the capacitors end with the inductors end and then other end of the inductor with the ammeter and now from ammeter to frequency generator back again. So this makes a closed loop. In this way we have made the series LCR circuit. Now let's prepare a table for series LCR circuit. In the second column we can see that there is frequency. On the top left of this board we can see we have a frequency generator and a multiplier. If I am setting this knob of frequency generator to 1, multiplier value is 100. It means 1 into 100. 100 hertz is the frequency. So if I increase its value, its value will be 100, 200, 300, 400 hertz then we can change its multiplier to 1k which means 1000. So in that case these figures will show 1000, 2000, 3000 hertz of frequency. In this way we can choose different frequencies and observe the current in the circuit through this ammeter. For three different cases we can choose different resistances and perform this experiment. And if we want to repeat the experiment, so we can choose some different value of C as well. Now, if we plot this emitter current with respect to the frequency, we will observe curves like this. So these are for different values of resistances. So let's pick one curve out of this, which we have drawn for R1. The frequency at which the current is maximum is our resonance frequency. So we can observe this value from the graph and also we know that the theoretical value of resonance frequency is 1 by 2 pi root LC. Here L is the value of your inductance and C is the value of your capacitance. After this we need to calculate the bandwidth. To calculate the bandwidth let the value of maximum current is I node then choose a value of current at 0.707 I node at this value we will get two frequencies so the difference of these frequencies will be the bandwidth we also have its theoretical value so we can calculate using this formula the concept behind bandwidth is that the maximum power through the resistance R can be denoted by I node square R the bandwidth is when the power has become half. In case when we take 0.707 I node, the total power becomes half and at this place we define the bandwidth. Similarly, we can define quality factor which is F naught by beta. We know the value of resonance frequency. We also know the value of bandwidth. We can take a ratio of them and also calculate its value theoretically. So when we have calculated these three values experimentally and theoretically so we can calculate the percentage error as well. You must have observed that we have not used this voltmeter in this experiment. So if you place this voltmeter across this capacitor in that case you can measure the voltage drop across this capacitor with frequency and similarly 
connect this voltmeter parallel to inductor coil and observe its readings with frequency then if we plot this voltage drop with respect to frequency we get curves like this this is because an inductive reactance is proportional to the frequency capacitive reactance is inversely proportional when their values become equal so this is our resonance frequency at which we obtain the maximum value of current so this is the condition of obtaining resonance only in that frequency range you can get resonance where at any frequency their values are equal now let's move to the parallel lcr circuit this is the circuit you can see so to make this circuit on this box first we can complete one loop and then add another component in parallel of previous components so that would be a better technique to do this first from the ac generator let's connect the resistor and then from resistor we come to the inductor coil and then just complete the circuit from inductor to ammeter and ammeter to frequency generator back again so we have completed one loop as you can see on your right hand side now we just need to connect this capacitor in parallel to the resistance and inductor so let's do this and now this is done again make a table like before change the frequency and for different resistances we can observe the value of current in this circuit we will obtain similar plots but different anti resonance frequencies let's choose one of them the anti resonance frequency f node is the frequency when the value of current is minimum and its theoretical value can be calculated using this formula using the value of this anti resonance frequency we can find out the quality factor using this formula 2 pi f not l by r but its theoretical value is also given so in both of these cases we can also calculate the percentage error you may find different kinds of boxes in some boxes the circuit is already given you just need to connect some variable resistors or capacitors from some other place using connecting wires but the basic principle and the basic circuit is always the same so being independent of the design of the box you can perform this experiment but if you want to perform this experiment on a breadboard then you need a separate ammeter and a function generator so as per the diagram used above in this experiment we can make these two kinds of circuits on the board sometimes we don't use this resistor here but we use some resistance box outside so that we can change the value of resistance easily in all those possible cases you can perform this experiment with the same kind of calculation same kind of table and find the resonance and anti resonance frequency hope you understand this well please don't forget to like share and subscribe to our channel your donation is the only support for us any amount of donation from your side will help us to grow more and develop more content like this take care have a very good day